Welcome everyone to the Witness Underground podcast. Today we have Matthew Smiley, a lawyer from Arizona and a big supporter of the Witness Underground, the movie and the podcast. Um, I want to say just to start off, thank you, Matthew, for supporting the project on Patreon. It's a huge uh, honor to have someone support the project at the level that you do and to have do it for so long. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It means a lot. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, when I first saw your, your uh, project, I mean, I was blown away because I, I had never seen anything close to, you know, what you, what you put out there. And, um, and then I saw the movie and I was just like, holy fucking shit. I mean, it was just, it was just so good. It was just so incredibly good. And it just touched me in a, a way that I've never, you know, felt. And I've, I've been part of the XJW community, you know, community since 1987. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So long You've time. You've had it for a while. Yeah. <laughs> since, yeah. since the pre-internet text-based news forums yeah. or whatever. Exactly. Well, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, was there anything in particular while we're on the topic of the, of the Witness Underground documentary that really stood out to you as being special? I mean, I just, you know, how we got to know the individual, you know, folks, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the show and, and, you know, their experiences and their, you know, their relationships with, you know, their family and just, you know, the, the talent that was, you know, that was fucking awesome that they were just, you know, they like, you know, stuck with it and they were like, I don't know. I mean, it was just so many things really, honestly, but it was just, it was one of the most raw sort of like, you know, just, you know, I've seen a lot of, of, you know, X whatever shows. And this was the one that just really stuck with me because it just was so real. And it was so, um, you know, you just, you really started to love the people that were in the show. I, I mean, I just, I really, felt like a, this bond with these people and, um, you know, coming from, you know, from the same background, it's like, you know, I, I wish I would have known them when, you know, when I was growing up because they're just like such incredible people. So. Awesome. Yeah. That's something I think I didn't realize that I was doing while I was doing it. Like I'd been getting interviews and, felt the camaraderie as an interviewer towards an interviewee. Like we have a personal connection. We have a related story. We, even if it's, even if we don't have never known each other. And that was true for even Ryan in the movie, the main, the guy that kind of carries the story forward with the, the logical demise of his faith being tested and like all the threads being pulled in it all, all unraveling. Um, right. And it, I never met him. I've heard of him, but I never met him until that interview. And I think there's something about just really knowing the characters that humanizes them when you, mm -hmm. the way I did it. And I think it just sort of came intuitively from trying to just relate. And, and I found that I've loved so many documentaries that do humanize the person that make you feel like that, just as you described, like you wish you would have known them, that you do feel like, you know, them, like you bonded with them by watching this movie. Right. And it's, and that's beyond the interview. It's also like a, bit of the art from the editor, Sean right. Ramsey for cutting the story in such a way that it kind of, it, it works. And there's so many times where I was like, no, we're not changing it anymore. And she's like, yeah, but it's better this way. And I'm like, you're driving me crazy. You know, like, we had a lot of iterations like that. I'm like, I can't right. watch this film again. <laughs> but in the end, like her, her art is also there in a really big way that I think helps the audience connect that way. Yeah. It's very cool. I feel like that's like the beginning of the movie is like, who are they? Usually, usually cult films are like, there's crazy people in a cult. I'll right. never relate to them. They're right. not, they're basically not even human. They're something else. They're other. Right. And I'm like, no, no, no. Regular people join cults and they don't yep. know it. Yeah. You might actually be in a cult and not realize it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that was the special thing that, that you, you know, accomplished, you know, with your, with your storytelling. And it was just like, you know, 
you know, I just, you know, you just start to get to know them. And then through the film, I mean, it's just like, uh, it's just the, the progression was just so great. And there was like these ha ha moments and there were, there was this like, you know, holy shit moments. And there were just, I don't, I don't know what else to say. It was just, it was, it was the best, you know, and I've seen a lot of, you know, films or whatever on, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses, starting with Dwayne Magnati's uh, Witnesses of Jehovah back in like 88. This is mm -hmm. by far the best, you know, one I've ever seen. And it's just, it's so incredible. And that's why when we talked, I'm like, this needs to be seen, you know, at the Phoenix Film Festival and every other film festival, because it's just, it doesn't even, I mean, outside the, the, the cult aspect of it, it's just a, such a great film. Um, Thank you. Yeah. That, that I actually had not forgotten entirely, but just preparing for the interview, I was like, oh yeah, Matthew's the guy who invited me to come to Arizona and show the movie. And right. I still want to do that. So good, anyone who, who's in Arizona region, in Phoenix area, especially, right? You're in Phoenix? Yep. I'll, I'll come there to show it, but let's, let's like pack a house or something. Let's like make All it, right, let's yeah. make it a Fuck thing. Yeah. Hell yes. Cool. That'd be awesome. Awesome. I, it is interesting because so, I also watched a lot of X witness movies and I was inspired to make this because I've, although there are so many, so many, there's actually like maybe 20 that I could, we could probably name if we went through or, and I have, I have a list ongoing list of ones I've watched and some I haven't yet. Um, so there's this legacy of making movies on the topic. And as a witness, I watched them. And then as an X witness, I didn't care because I already deconverted. But then later I was like, seeing the new ones come out and it's really like, okay, well, I still don't feel like they're telling my story. I don't feel proud. First of all, I don't feel proud. I feel pity for the people in the movie and I feel pity for myself. And I don't want to ever feel that <laughs> for myself right. when I watch a movie. Right. Um, and I wanted to make something that's like, okay, yeah, this is insane. And we need to be, people need to understand how dangerous this group is, this cult is. And I feel like the people inside are victims and they're trapped and they're being coerced to do things, the shunning, especially. And that's the one thing that affected me. There's, there's child sex abuse. There's the blood transfusion issue. There's all these other issues that are big right. and important and should be right. illegal. But this one's like human rights and universal. Every ex witness has experienced some level of shunning or like complete disconnection from their family, which is right. complete. Like it should be illegal. No, it's an no act of hate. No doubt. Yeah, absolutely. We can talk about that since you're a lawyer. Maybe you have some insight <laughs> on how human <laughs> rights works. Um, but yeah, I, I made me want to like make a movie that's that shows people something that, that that I could say. You want to know my story? Watch this, and then we can talk. Because right. no amount of hours of trying to tell someone how my story it was or what this background is made any ever made any uh, difference. And also, I never wanted to really show them like, oh, watch this movie because that was my experience. And I'm, or this is my childhood. Check it out. It's, it was kind of awesome. You know, I didn't, there's nothing like that. So I was like, well, I want to make a film that kind of does all the things. It's like my childhood had some really amazing things in it and including the right. music and including the vibrant community. Right. And there are some things I missed, but also it goes dark. And so I want people to know the darkness. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm really glad, glad it resonated because I try to do a lot of things and it's, it's hard to do a lot of things in a movie. Right. Yeah. But yeah, as a lawyer, sure. what, what kind of law do you work on? Criminal. Criminal law. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right up the alley. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. How do you, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of shunning from a legal perspective? <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's, um, I mean, I think it's, well, from a legal perspective, I think it's legit because, you know, if you don't want to be in the organization, you don't have to. I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I, I believe in, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more or less um, a libertarian in the sense that, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you want to, if you want to participate in something, then you can, but, you know, mm -hmm. there's, you know, if there's rules, you know, you either go by the rules or you leave. So I don't, you know, I don't think there's legally, I don't think there's a whole lot you can do about it. I just, you know, I, morally it's, it's the most 
you know, insane, horrible possible thing that you could ever do to a person. And it, and it makes me sick. Um, you know, and I, and I know that, you know, some countries are, are, you know, saying, you know, no, you can't, you can't shun. And that's great. I'm all for it. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I think in America, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but you know, it's definitely interesting what's happening in Europe. There's, it is. they're defunding the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're in Which Belgium. Which is great. Yes. Yeah. At least yes. that. Like yeah, taking away their tax that. exempt status exactly. for being a charity. Exactly. Yes. They're offering nothing of good to anyone. Right. 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 Yeah. I'm 100% behind that. Fucking yeah. defund them, you know, take away their tax exempt status. You know, they can still exist. They can do whatever the yeah. fuck they want, but. But yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, there's no reason why a church who, you know, is supposed to live by these values and does not um, should enjoy a tax exempt status with what they do. So, mm-hmm. you know, they can do whatever they want. Again, you know, they're a club, you know, they reserve the right to refuse service to anybody. But, yeah. you know, you don't get a free, you know, tax exempt status for doing that. So, right. you know, you want to be racist, you want to be sexist, you want to be whatever the fuck you call them. Um, you Great, know, you gotta pay. for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can go do that, but you don't, yeah, you have to pay your taxes. Right. I think that's fair. I, I think that's a healthy perspective. Ryan from the movie has said in another interview, um, Ryan Sutter, that it's basically like a book club or like a, it's it's a newsletter that you you signed up for and they're like i don't want to be a part of the newsletter anymore please unsubscribe me like i if you don't want to talk to me anymore awesome because th- we're on the same page <laughs> keep <laughs> right. your keep your books keep your right. newsletter i don't want it in my inbox anymore <laughs> right right but release my parents from slavery please i would yes, appreciate exactly. the release <laughs> right right yeah. And that's the thing. And if anybody has ever tried to un- unsubscribe from anything, it's so fucking hard to get people to, you know, to get organizations to stop spamming you. And mm-hmm. that's that's kind of what the Jehovah's Witnesses are. They're like a, just a spamming organization that just refuses to say no. And um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Did you just, this is a topic I've I brought up a bunch of times and I read something doing research on it. I think it was a year ago or two years ago. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's a Belgian, a group of Belgian ex-witnesses took the Jehovah's Witnesses to criminal court and the Jehovah's Witnesses lost in criminal court. So in the, the determination was that they are a hate group and they're guilty of hate crimes in Belgium. Good. And it, it was a group of like 12 ex witnesses who were like shunning is evil and violation of human rights. And then the Jehovah's Witnesses lost to that. Then, like a year later, eight months later, I read like Religion News came out, like the news agency Religion News, I think it was called, or Cult News or something, Cult News something, um, came out with a, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses appealed that trial. Of course, they always appeal every time they're guilty of anything. And right. then they see if they can get away with re- reducing the. I don't know, the fine or whatever, or the sentence. And they got, they cleared it somehow. And then, so religion news or cult news or whatever it was, was saying, if you're going to report about um, a court trial, you also have to report later when it gets appealed and then the court trial or the case disappears. You can't just like, Jehovah's Witnesses are a hate group now. Awesome. Like raise it to the European court. It's like, no, that actually, that whole thing is dissolved. Um, right. Do you have any comments or did you follow that one at all? I didn't hear about that, but I mean, yeah. that's, that's sort of like the, you know, the standard in, uh, in criminal law, it's called shepherdizing. So, you know, you get a great verdict and it's like, awesome. And then, you know, you want to quote that in your, br- your legal brief. And then it's like you, you know, you shepherdize it and you're like, Oh fuck. It got, you know, overturned in the appeals court or whatever, and it's no longer good law. So, I mean, you know, I get that. Um, it doesn't change the fact that the witnesses are a fucking hate group, but 
you know, you you know, they're right. I mean, you've got to, you've got to report, you know, what happened. So how, how does that work? Because my very first thought is always, well, they're a multi-billion dollar company. They're one of the top 50 companies in New York every year. They're one of the richest companies on the planet. How, right. like, do they just pay off judges? Is there corruption on like every level of the court system? Or do you feel like it's relatively fair or how does that whole thing work? I'm totally ignorant <laughs> of the U.S. court system. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, um, no, I, I, I don't know if they pay anybody off. I feel like that, um, and I, I don't know this for sure, but I, I know that they hire the best possible people. You know, there's no way in hell you can convince me that their legal, you know, bureau is made up of entirely Jehovah's Witnesses. That's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the least you know. educated people, populist yeah, right, of any religion right, ever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they must hire I mean, someone. Well, they just hired that Italian guy. Ver I can't remember his name. Right. right. The guy that defended Catholics when Catholics were being exposed for child sex abuse. The Jehovah's Witnesses right. were like, well, we're also being exposed for child sex abuse. We need that guy. Yeah, because so let's get that guy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Of course. They've got <laughs> billions of fucking dollars. They're not going to like, you know, hire, you know, like use their free labor. You know, first of all, why is a, a lawyer in, a, in the Jehovah's Witnesses to begin with? That's like a violation of their rules. You're not supposed to go to higher education to begin with. So, why, you know, I mean, that's question number one. Question number two is, you know, these, you know, fucking people have no clue about these constitutional issues, these major issues that could, you know, fucking sink them. So, of course, they're going to hire the best possible people. They've got the money. Of course they do. Um, you know, that said, um, you know, I still think they're on the losing side of of most of their issues. So. Mm. So interesting. Have you worked, what kind of court, uh, court cases have you worked on or do you usually work on? Like you said criminal, but like what kind of, if you can talk about it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I mostly, uh, do drug cases cause that's my, like my specialty. Um, you know, addiction and, uh, You know, in in Arizona, anyway, like, you know, fentanyl is a huge deal. So I would say 90, 95 percent of my my clients, you know, even if they commit property crimes or victim crimes or even, you know, violent crimes, it's all due to, to fentanyl. Um, wow. So, you know, that's that's my focus is is uh, is drug crimes and, you know. I, I feel like addiction is a is a a huge you know issue not only legally and criminally but you know for all of us and um, that's what always sort of uh, makes me laugh when I when I talk about the Jehovah's Witnesses is you know they've got this you know you know if you you know if you fuck somebody you're in trouble but you know if you are a glutton or if you you know drink too much you know, not so much of an issue unless, you know, something really bad happens, like, you know, get a DUI or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it just, uh, addiction's a, a big deal. And, and the, the people in the religion that, you know, that I still, you know, talk to have, uh, a big problem with it. And, um, with addiction. Yeah, for sure. From pharmaceuticals or from street drugs? Um, from, from pharmaceuticals and alcohol, I've okay. noticed those are the the two big things. And um, yeah. alcohol, you know, like drunkenness was common where I'm from. I mean, Wisconsin's like the most drunk state in America, so it's not right. saying much. But right. I'm from a really middle of nowhere place where there's nothing to really do except for nature stuff, which I love. But like, you only get you only want so much of that. So you'll drink right. a lot, including right. my family. But I think. I'll, most of the witnesses, even like the pioneer witnesses I was hanging out with when I was a teenager, 20 year old, they, we were drinking maybe sure. not so much to excess, but like it was common enough with my general witness friends to have a pretty drunk party. 
Yeah. And a lot of people confuse witnesses and Mormons and Mormons like are zero caffeine, zero alcohol. And right. witnesses are like, no, we can party our faces off. As long as you don't get blackout <laughs> or puke, like you're fine. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> don't tell anyone if you get really fucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so true. Uh, but fentanyl so true. is interesting. So I just watched, I'm living in Mexico, as we've communicated. Mm -hmm. And um, there's drugs everywhere. Like I live in like a pretty touristy area and it, like every 20th person is like, do you want some Coke? Do you want some? And it just like lists off whatever drugs you could like most party years want. And right. they have it, but fentanyl is a part of everything. There's even the pharmacies are all selling pharmaceuticals here along this tourist strip on the ocean um, without prescriptions at mm. a higher inflated price. And also they're mixed with fentanyl sometimes. So like there's all these warnings, like be careful what pharmacy you go to because it might be a narcos pharmacy. And they're doing all kinds of nefarious stuff, trying to make money off of their, like, what do you call it? A clandestine labs, fentanyl that they make right. somewhere in the state, in the jungle. Yep. Um, but I also watched the Narcos TV show and I'm not, it's like old news now. Right? It's like the nineties, eighties, nineties. And it like, they talk about like all the gangs and drug sales in the U S and then the different nar Mexican Narcos trying to like displace the, the Colombian market and the U S gangs by right. totally killing them off and displacing them with their own drug dealers right. and drug traffickers. And like hearing about fentanyl, like I have friends of people in the movie have died doing Coke in Northern States um, on their birthday because the Coke wasn't Coke. The Coke had fentanyl right. in it. Right. And it's, it's like, is the entire U S like air is the entirety of the U S like all narcos from Mexico selling fentanyl. It seems like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's, it's true. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And, um, yeah, it, you know, fentanyl is infected just about fucking everything. I mean, I, you know, she knew and me, I know, you know, attorneys that have, you know, have gotten addicted to fentanyl. I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. It's when you uh, say between you and me and also everyone that watches YouTube, right? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't yeah. delete something, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but I okay. mean, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big deal. Fentanyl is a, a big fucking deal. Yeah. And, um, yeah, stay away from it. It's not good. Yeah. I'm scared of it. I'm not yeah. touching anything that's made good. of white powder. <laughs> yeah. Good. Um, wow. Okay. So you mentioned a movie. You mentioned the movie that you saw in 88 if you don't mind me switching gears back to where we were. A sure. ago. Um, yeah. I was curious if you like, what other movies hit you or struck you from the X witness space that, or like even other, other movies that are like somewhat related media that right. relates to the story of the leaving the witnesses or leaving a cult. Right. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, there was that, that was, there was that uh, movie with uh, Dwayne man, night man. How do you say his last name? Magnani. Sure. Okay. Witnesses uh, of Jehovah. There was, okay. I mean, it was, you know, back in 88, it was right after, you know, Franz left. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was very, um, 80s you know, style probably. <laughs> yeah. Educational. 80s style. Yep. Very ev evangelical. I mean, it was well, like you a know, Christian really, based one. Yes. Christian based. Okay. And it was, you know, it was all right. It was, uh, it wasn't bad. Um, and then, you know, after that, there, I mean, I really feel like there's been like a lack of, of, you know, of media, of, of, of video media, um, you know, since that time. I mean, I, I don't know. You said you, you could name like 20 movies. I can name like maybe three. I mean, it was, there was apostasy, which was mm -hmm. okay. There was, you know, um, you can live forever. The, you know, the gay. Oh movie, yeah. It just which, came out in Canada. Yeah. Which is yeah. fucking amazing. I loved it. Awesome. You know, yeah. Like second best to, you know, your film. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 you know, it's real. Um, but yeah, I've been talking just, to the director and producer. I think it's a couple. I'm not quite sure, but they were there. He's especially like really 
active on Twitter, especially through the, the film festival run for um, You Can Live Forever and all the little social media stuff he was doing. Like he's been, he posts almost every day for like the last six months. Yeah. I mean, for a while we were talking and I was like, let me know if I can help you guys promote your film um, in any way. And like, let's collaborate. I, want to use, I gave him a link to my film back like early in the spring. But it's that like, so cool. I've kind of lost touch. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see that one. I actually haven't seen it yet. I need to go watch it. Oh my God, it's so good. My daughter cool. was gay and, okay. you know, she just, she watched it and she was just blown away. I mean, it's, it's so fucking like on point. Like, I mean, it, you said you haven't watched it yet. I haven't yeah. seen it yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you will, there's not, there's not a moment in that movie where you will say like, now this doesn't you know, like gel with me. This doesn't feel right. I mean, they just nail every single moment, you know, with a, with it's, I don't know. It's incredible. Right. It's, I'm it's excited something. to see it. Yeah. 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 So, you know, everything that they were putting out looked amazing. So yeah, I was very yeah. excited. I just, just totally lost track. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, but other than that, I mean, I just can't think of, I mean, I, um, I had, you know, the, the, the African-American friend um, who did the, what was the name of the movie? Truth uh, Be Told. Yes. Yeah. So we, yeah. So we, we, uh, we had a, his film premiere here in Phoenix. We had oh, did you? Good, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah cool. We had a pretty good, we had a pretty good uh, showing and, um, that's back really? in like it's like fifteen years ago, yeah. Like early late late two thousands, I think. Yeah, yeah, basically. So yeah, you're like yeah, I actually watched yeah. it two years ago because I I I got his name and the name of the film and I had seen his content like I'd seen something about it and then I finally watched it when we were on the film festival run because I was like I'm going to New York and he made that in New York and so I wrote to him and he came to our screening. Oh, he did. Um, I can't remember his name at the moment, but it's a. Yeah, and so did the That's crew who helped cool. like promote it. They drove up from DC and down from New Haven, Connecticut to New York City to like Times Square, the Hell's Kitchen to where we were screening. And yeah, it was awesome. So we all, a bunch of us were hanging out. I was like all these old school activists, and I kind of I felt like a little bit of FOMO. Like I was having the time of my life, but also felt FOMO that because they were like, "We're doing it again," and I was like, "Again? Where was I during the first run? <laughs> you guys are awesome. How did I miss out?" And this, you're involved in that too. That's so that cool. is so cool. That is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me more about this this uh, FOMO. So when did you leave exactly? I left in 2008. I was 27 years old. Okay. And I had I kind of left at 19 back in 2000. And like I had like a six, eight month break. And I made this deal with my dad basically like, I think it now I'm thinking, starting to think it might've been like an abusive move because like it was emotional and like Trump, like a traumatic, memorable conversation. Basically it came down to like, he's like, just keep on doing it. Even if you don't believe it. In fact, you should start pioneering even though you don't believe it. And then talk to the elders. Cause like, they'll help you believe it again and then read the Bible more. And I'm like, no amount of reading the Bible or talking to these idiots is going to solve the problems. I have big questions. And he's like, ignore the big questions, ignore the doubts. That's what they tell you. Pray more and right, and then right. go and talk to people and knock on the door because teaching other people the nonsense reinforces it for you. Right. And he's and I was like, well, I want to go to college. I want this. And I want to, I'm going to keep my band and I'm not going to follow this rule. I'm not going to follow that rule. And he's like, you don't really need the Jehovah's Witnesses. You don't really need the elders. You don't really need the congregation. You don't really even need to go at all. Um, you just need your relationship with God. And I was like, well, if that's the standard, that's pretty low. And he's like, but if you start pioneering, I'll give you like half price rent at the, <laughs> they just bought this neighbor's house when he died. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, for I'll spend 50 hours a month um, working for an organization I don't believe. <laughs> I have very, very mixed feelings about it, And I don't have any Jehovah's Witness friends. Um, right. All my friends are not, they're all worldly. For, to save $125, I will, I'll do 50 <laughs> hours of work. And it's like, I'll, I'll, sure I'll do 150. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, right? The scenario is so silly, but it was more coercion from like, keep the family together kind of situation. So I kept that kind of going 
kept my band, went to college, and then met all the people in the movie shortly after that. So it wasn't all terrible. I'm trying to turn some turn in some lemonade, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> but very cool. Yeah, so leaving at 20, 2008, at 27. So I totally was just like, at that point, I was sort of like on indoctrinating myself since I was 19 to 27, mm-hmm. one, one step at a time. As you know, it's not just like one thing. There's always like the final thing, but it's not just the one thing. Right, um, right. But so by the time I was 27, I was like totally deconverted. And I didn't ever look on the internet about what, witness ex-witnesses were saying until i started making the movie like a decade later i was like i wonder if there's other people like me in the world (laughs) of course there are hundreds of thousands yeah and they're making movies and traveling around and meeting each other and doing activism and i was like oh wow there's a whole active vibrant community Um, what was that like for you and what was your issue to leave or what were your how was your path out was your was your dad like uh an elder or no he was like the bottom rung he was a literature counter guy uh, like okay. a dad of five kids and a right. full-time worker so he's busy and stressed and just right. trying to do the you know doing the bare minimum and right best barely, he can barely keeping it together <laughs> right right understood yeah, yeah. Um, yeah good for him though i mean that's 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 hard my dad um was a circuit overseer and mm. um big shot yeah big yeah. shot guy <laughs> right so i never got in trouble so when i got you know when I, when they found out i was smoking and when they found out i was feeling up girls or whatever i didn't get in trouble but um i mean the the thing was with me and i think i told you this before um, what didn't make sense to me was like the whole, um, not being able to like use your, your gifts. Right. Mm-hmm. So when I was, when I was in, you know, elementary school, my, you know, now I went to a very small school, my, my science teacher said, look, you're going to run track in seventh grade. I mean, you are, yeah. that's what you're going to do. And I'm like, because mm, you're good at it. Yeah, because you're good. You saw your natural talent, right? And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen because you know we're not really allowed to do that. And my dad and my grandfather advocated for me, and my dad said, "No, fuck no, you know you're not going, you're not going to do that." Um, it's such a nice thing to like look back on because I had moments like that as well in high school where someone's like, Hey, you're really good at this. Like you want to yeah. stay after hours and work on that pottery or like, yeah, right. like right. we have this special thing. You want to do it. Like you're obviously like into this and like the school has funding, like go yeah. for it. And then to be able to then have to turn around and be like, well, there's this religion part of my life that says no. So right. I have to like run it by like a whole group of people and they're, they always turn you down for this kind of thing. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that was, you know, like a huge bummer. And then um, there was this guy from our congregation. His name is Barry, and he was like the golden boy. And he went to Bethel, and he would come back from Bethel. And, you know, my parents would, you know, have him for dinner, you know, every year when he came back. And one year he came back, and he's like, you know, some shit's going down, like, you know, Ray Franz has, you know, left the governing body and, you know, at Dunlap, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, the guy that did the, the, um, my parents were like missionaries. So the guy that had, you know, was like the missionary guy, he left. And so that was a big deal. And, um, so I, you know, rode my bike to the to the the library, and I found out that he had written a book that Ray Franz had written a book, and um, and it was a review by M. Jim with uh, Jim Penton, who I later got to meet, and it was in Christianity Today, and so I'm like, hmm. holy fuck, there's a book. 
And so I, you know, rode my bike to the Christian bookstore and, you know, there was crisis of conscience on the shelf and I'm like, holy fucking shit. Right. So, you know, I bought it and I read it and I'm like, dad, you know, I think there's some things that we need to address here because, Mm -hmm. you know, my dad had like the entire library. He had like, you know, the, you know, the, the books going back to like, you know, the, uh, you know, Russell's, you know, yeah, like uh, the silver lamp series, the yes, red books, the yes, Bible studies in the scriptures. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He had all of it. Isn't it and great so, when your brain's like, I don't know. Cause I don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm always yeah. like, what is it? I don't, I don't know. And it's amazing. I'm so glad I don't care that much. I've lost that part of the brain and the cells have been reused. <laughs> right. Recycled. Yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, I'm like, you know, double checking the shit that's in crisis of conscience. And my, you know, parents have all the fucking books and I'm like, holy fucking shit. This is, he's not making this shit up. It's real. Right. Just for anyone who's not related to this religion, that book crisis of conscience was written by a leader of the religion who left out of from his own conscience he couldn't do it anymore because he realized it was essentially the gist of the book is they're just making this up as they go there's no inspired by god there's no holy right. spirit there's no gods in control there's no communication with a higher being or jesus or something nope so he left and did a huge expose but from the lens of christianity a little bit like he went he's still like a god or a faith-based human being right for the rest of his life i think right right so he, he, he was, did a lot of scripture quoting and stuff like that yeah yeah for real and he was and that was what made the book you know special is because he you know you know took the perspective of like hey you know christianity is still cool um <laughs> But I disagree, I but he, you know, it's a different time. So <laughs> no, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. And, um, you know, it was just, it was just, he took it from such a, like a perspective that was so. It's like palatable just, for a witness, right? Like, yes, hey, yes. It you was can, just you like, can walk hey. away from this and maintain everything else. Yeah. You don't need yeah. this this false right. organization in the middle you between can, you and Jesus or you and God. Exactly. You can yeah. still believe in your, you know, nonsense Jehovah, and you can still believe in, you know, that, you know, there's no Trinity, and you can still believe in all this stuff. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, but it's also kind of bullshit. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he was really saying it's complete bullshit. Yeah, I think that's yeah, like totally. Yeah, the the groundbreaking part was like right. the leader of this religion says it's complete bullshit. Mm-hmm. Get out, and a right. lot of people did right. Like that book is still having like effects and reverberations. Yeah, in that yeah, society. for sure. I mean, it's it's like the it's it's really the 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 top of you know the like no one has ever supplanted that that book Mm -hmm. and you know the the thing for me was you know when i when i rode my bike to the christian bookstore and i bought it and then i you know came back home and i said dad you know can you can we talk about this and he's like no um you know we're gonna burn it we're gonna burn the book wow yeah. Which so, who's burning books? Like if you're going to equate the practice of book burning, who else does that? Who else has done that in history? I can only think of one famous book burning moment. Huh. There's probably even more than one though. Nazis? I went to the, that's the first on the list for me. Huh. I went, I went to the famous place where they burned books and it was actually reenacted in, in, in Indiana Jones, the, Hunt Quest for the Holy Grail or whatever it was called. Right. Raiders of the Lost Ark. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Not the Grail. The the Ark. Yeah. Yeah. He actually when he like doesn't Harrison Ford like bump into Hitler himself and, <laughs> and he like he's shocked and then he's like <laughs> he like holds the book and Hitler's like okay I'll sign it. <laughs> yes. Yes. So great. So funny. <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. So yeah, that book, I actually have a copy. I, I've actually never read it because when I finally got the copy of it, I was, I was like seven years out of the religion or something. Right. And it was just on my list of things to read. And I found it at like the Goodwill and I was like, Oh, this belongs in my bookshelf. And then I ended up like going to some, a greater like community library. So it's somewhere probably still protected and archived some, something. Right. But it is interesting that no one's ever really done anything since then on that scale. Cause that's what 70 early seventies or early eighties. He did that. Can't remember. Uh, 82. 82. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to plug the people we were talking about, Gregorio Smith of Smithcraft Productions made the movie Truth Be Told. It's a documentary okay. that he did. And it right. has amazing... The thing I think that's special about that film has a lot of interviews that are, you know, we've seen a lot of before or since then, something like it, especially with the YouTube channels. But he did this... He did a lot of graphics that were really like Orwellian, 1984 style, dark like authoritarian evil theocracy style, which is awesome. <laughs> right. I love yeah. his marketing for it. Yeah. No, he did it, was, it was awesome. It was great. It was awesome to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. And it was yeah, also yeah. the guys from, do you know the podcast? Oh, it's not, they didn't tell us to do this. No. Oh my God. I'm burning it so hard. Joe Mitchell and Ruben Ortiz. Do you know those guys? I don't. Okay. Nobody asked us to do this, the podcast. That's what it's called. Um, those guys helped um, Gregorio Smith in the marketing of the film and did a lot of activism, like you did showing the film in Arizona. They were touring it around and showing up and driving across the country in multiple states to like help push that movie. And so okay. when I met those guys, they're like, it was like, they're like, this is like a reunion. We did this on the last movie against the Jehovah's Witnesses. And I was like, whoa, what did I miss? I missed the party. This is so, thanks for showing up. I love it. And so they were just like having huge chats outside the bar. We stayed up until like three in the morning. The bar stayed open like an hour late for us. It was like yeah. right when the pandemic was over, we were in downtown in Manhattan. And there was this like little brew pub and they hadn't had any customers for like a year. And everyone's masked and like the mask thing had just been lifted like that week. And so we were just like filled their pub and they were just like giving us free drinks. And they were like, you guys all live here. Please, please tell us you live here. The most fun people. I think they were just like so excited to have human contact and like human interaction, but it was really fun. So we have some great pictures of those, that, that whole crew awesome. hanging out. Yeah. It's like a little legacy like of that. ex-witness filmmakers hanging yeah. and partying. Right. Yeah. It's also beautiful, beautiful, like, it's a pretty multicultural culture, the Jehovah's Witnesses. But then the ex-witness culture, it's like just as multicultural, but like with like fired up in self-empowered spirit about it. Like, yeah, we right. can do, we have something to say and we like really care about it. Before we had something to say and it was like we were forced to say stuff about it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Very true. Did you, did you watch uh, The Leftovers, the, the HBO series by chance? The leftovers. No. Yes. No. No. What's it about? How does it? What am I missing? I'm writing it in my list, my ongoing list. <laughs> oh my god! Holy fucking shit! It is. I mean, it's about like you know this this cult that you know survives after people get raptured. There's like you know the rest <laughs> of the people oh. on earth. <laughs> You know, there's like this cult that, like, you know, is, is there for the rest of the people, and everybody else been, has been raptured, and it is the most in fucking incredible movie you could ever, or I'm sorry, series uh, mm -hmm. that you could ever see. And Very cool. um, yeah, please. Is that based it. on like a popular Christian book series? I remember back in the '90s, there was yeah some book series, yeah, about the rapture, right. There's a really right. funny little video that I've been sharing around. Um, it's like, you know, those videos where like one guy is talking to himself, but he's like playing a different character. Right. It's one of those kind of thing. And the guy's like, he travels to the future and he's like, I mean, what year is it? He's like, it's 2072. He's like, and like, 
you guys, are you guys okay? Like what happened? He's like, I came from 2023. And the guy's like, Oh, like why? What, what's the issue? He's like, Oh, well in 2023, there's like the global warming is a problem and everything's about to fail and the ecosystems are about to collapse and we're overproducing this and we're decimating the ecosystems and there's war and all these different places. And the guy's like, Oh, Oh yeah, that no, like we have like, uh, we've like complete homeostasis of the ecosystems. There's no more war. We've gotten rid of all fossil fuel use and there's just complete harmony across the whole planet. He's like, how is that possible? He's like, you won't believe this, but like, you know, the whole second coming of Jesus thing that, that shit's real. And they raptured everybody. And as soon as all the Christians got out of the way, we were able to make so much progress <laughs> in society. We seem to get all the Christians out of the way. <laughs> that was awesome. So that was like a fun twist. And, and I, I don't know what you, your beliefs are. I'm speaking from an atheist comedy perspective, but <laughs> do you, are you willing to oh, share where, where you're at with um, post yeah, cult absolutely. belief absolutely. systems? Yeah. yeah, definitely. So I'm Catholic and uh-huh. um, no, I'm a hundred percent a believer, but mm. you know, with what, disappoints me is you know the ex you know jw community in general is very atheistic and very like you know this is all fucking bullshit and i get it you know i mean like there's plenty of stuff to criticize with the bible with you know with the churches Mm -hmm. whatever but there's also a lot of you know good stuff um that you know, is not typically talked about. So, yeah. Yeah. So basically, I'd love to hear yeah, more of that. Yeah. So I do a YouTube thing where I, you know, do like the scriptures and I, I talk that, you know, I do like a, a commentary. Um, you have your own channel? I, I do. Okay. I do. do you want to yeah. talk about it? I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> you- but I, I haven't made it public yet. Oh, so, okay. So you're work- it's yeah. like a new thing you're working on. It is. It is. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, that's my thing. I feel like, you know, the majority of the XJW community is very atheistic and very, you know, pessimistic. And I'm like, look, there's, you know, more to life than, than you know, yeah, the, the witnesses suck and God, you know, sucks. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, I feel like we're sucks. just a bit arrogant as fuck. <laughs> like, right. no, it's all bullshit. The whole thing's bullshit. Fuck your right. religion is the general right. gist. And it like that energy is fun. And I think it's a great place to start when you come from a cult. It's like right. phew, clean slate. It is. Everything's yeah, bullshit. It. Right, right. And then over time, you're like, once the anger is gone and you've sort of like calmed down, then it's okay. Well, what can I add back in? And I've added right. a lot of things back in, but from an informed place. Or from right. an experience that I've had, and yes. or yes. a community that like resonates with me, like my I don't know my authentic self or something, and I could talk for hours about like my beliefs, but just call myself an atheist. Like I was an atheist in the Kingdom Hall. <laughs> I was an atheist when I left the religion, and it took a while to like wrap my head around believing that everything I had believed up until that point wasn't real. And that, but then like weird stuff happens that's difficult to explain. And like certain, certain things, uh, people have explanations, all different kinds of explanations for phenomena. Right. Right. And I'm not sure which ones are correct or if none of them are correct. I care more about humanity as a humanist. That's more like my position. I'm like, I'm a humanist and I have informed beliefs that, some people could call spiritual, but I hesitate to like use that language because it has a lot of loaded meaning for me, but right. it is, it is interesting. And I, I think there is a d- great divide I've seen since the day I, when I started marketing or like looking into the community, what is the X witness community? Well, there's the Christian X witnesses and then there's the atheist X witnesses and they don't hang out together no. at all really, except for some no. people like Kim and Mikey and I do enjoy their energy. I don't watch them very much, but they're on the Christian side of the spectrum. They don't actually talk about their beliefs all that much. It doesn't seem like, but yeah, I'm, it is interesting. Cause there's like, it's yeah, 
Yeah, I'd love to know more. What What is your perspective on all of that? How did you get where you're at? Was there a clean no, break to Catholicism? There's no, there's no, look, there's Lloyd. And God bless him. I love him. He's, 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 he's great. But look, there's Lloyd and there's, you know, the super, you know, Christian, like, you know, he's going to accept Jesus as, you know, God and whatever. And there's no, like, in between, there's no person that is willing to, like, look at the Bible text and say, okay, there's some fucked up shit here. But, like, how do we, you know, make sense of this? How do we, you know, it, you know, is there enough to maintain a identity as a, as a Christian or as a Jewish person or whatever? You know, is there enough there? And, of course, there's, like, way more than enough. I mean, like, I'm, you know, I went to University of Chicago. I studied, you know, um, I did a master's degree there before I went to, to law school. And, you know, I, I know for sure there, there is enough to say, you know, I can be a Christian. And I, you know, and that's what pisses me off because, you know, back in the day, there was people that, you know, when they left the religion, they, you know, put out, you know, some stuff. There was the Christian crest who, you know, who examined the, the, the issues of the day back in, you know, the early 90s. And they, you know, said, you know, is abortion right or is it wrong? You know, this and that. They looked at all the major issues and they, they published this journal that was amazing. You know, mm. who, what do we have? Who now? are they? I've, I've never heard of them, actually. Were they related yeah. to the ex witnesses, or were they yeah, a separate? Yeah, for total? sure. Oh, really? And that's the thing. Yeah, and there was there was Richard Huawei, who you know produced the the Christian Respondent. He like you know he put something out every fucking week. I mean, it was like gold. It was fucking incredible. Like he mm. devastated the 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 witness. You know, uh, you know uh, Christian know arguments like he mm -hmm. just like nailed it and, it and it was so good it was so good and he it is interesting in, in like you know 2010 he's gone there's i don't know who else there is you know today there you know i mean who is of uh, it's like maintaining the 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 christian belief i don't yeah. know if there's anyone it's a useful bridge for Jehovah's active Jehovah's witnesses. Like I'm, I feel like, I don't know how you feel. You've been out longer than me, but I don't have any energy to reach back and like try to grab witnesses out of their trap through logic or with love or anything. I, I right. do, I'm, it's not even a part of my like view of the world. Um, I mean, I do want people to make their own mind up and I hope my film is an, a nice addition to the collection of beautiful tools that can help people. But it, I feel like for active witnesses, having a Christian perspective that leads people using the Bible to the logical conclusion that what they're a part of isn't, isn't valuable or is, or is, is actually dangerous or is misleading, whatever words that you can, whatever it is to like dis entangle someone from that organization is useful. And I think you're absolutely onto something. There were a lot of very helpful deep dive groups or people trying to work on the doctrine of witnesses and help people out um, by presenting that information in a, in a way that witnesses would respond to, or even other Christian or you know, cult like groups probably. Um, whereas right now it's sort of like, they're not really respected. It doesn't seem like. Right. And so when with witnesses are trying to find something on the internet, it's going to be basically secular information. Right. And for them, it's a difficult, it could be a difficult thing. For me, that was like an attractive thing, but not everyone's like that. I had no. a decade of disentangling my beliefs in it from that perspective of, I don't believe in any gods. Right. It's one more God. Good. But, Which for you, that's good. 
but there's a, a lot of people that need to like, you know, deconstruct what they've been taught and then reconstruct something. Right. Yeah. And to feel comfortable to make those big moves. Right. 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 Using the same and tools and skills. Yes, exactly. And there's just, there's no, there, there's just no place for them to go. I mean, I mean, there was like this amazing, for gay people, there was this amazing, you know, a newsletter that got published like every, every month back in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, mm. You know, and it was like, I mean, you would just be blown away the, the stories of these people. Um, you just don't have that today. You just yeah. don't, you just don't see it. And, you know, I'm, you know, that's one of the things I'm really blessed with is, is I have this, you know, library of shit that nobody gives a fuck about, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to try to package that in a new way or something? Uh, well, you know, th here's the thing. All these people are old and they're dying, right? Mm -hmm. You know, Richard Rahway is dead. A lot of the people that wrote this stuff are dead. Um, but it was just like the 80s and the 90s were such a rich, you know, time for people to like produce all this stuff. And it's like, you know, it's just like it doesn't exist, you know? I mean, like mm -hmm. your movie is like the first thing that like touched me for like 20 years. I'm like, wow. You know, that's amazing. I mean, yeah. yeah. I feel like there's I mean, a lot of heart and it's not my work. It's like the interviewees, right? Like it's what they had to say, like from a place of love, they just want to talk to their dad. Right. Right. Like, yes. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like, wh exactly. What are we doing? We're all yeah. still alive and we're choosing this. This is the life we want for ourselves. Right. Like, it's us. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Which and I'm I so did. happy that that was their message because that made it feel like it's on a higher plane, you know, like I'm not just like hating witnesses. Like I know, like I don't want to be in this situation. It sucks. Like right. they're doing it. I'm receiving it, but it takes two, right? Like I'm, I gave up on putting effort into like, reaching my individual family members or them as a group because it resulted in zero. How many times are you going to do that with zero results before you stop doing it? Right. Um, and like, you have to mourn the death of something if it doesn't exist. <laughs> and, um, but I, I love the message that especially Ryan put out. It's just like, I love these people. This yeah. is my family. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for but, sure. yeah I appreciate it. It's really interesting to hear you say that from that perspective. And I feel like you're totally onto something I haven't really given much thought to with your channel idea and like even just presenting these people's ideas, because I've heard whispers of these books and these people you're talking about, maybe different ones, maybe the same ones I actually don't remember because I'm not really tied into that, but it have, I have wondered in the past, like what is lost and, and yeah, is is there something of value there? Probably like people spent their whole, this is their life's work, right? Like my right. life's work up till right now is this movie and it right. feels really amazing, like powerful for me and people react like you are. And it's like, okay, I'm onto something or we, we as a group, we're onto something important and people are really resonating with it. I'm so happy to finally like be able to put it out in the world. But other people did that too in their own way with books and with music right. and it would be really interesting to have you present on your channel or possibly again on this one, some of those ideas, because I think people have no idea that it exists. And we're in the age of like YouTube shorts and Instagram reels, like who's reading books about deep, esoteric, biblical, philosophical angles, <laughs> you know, right, were the right. debates of 50 years ago that are right. no longer the debate of the time. Right. 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 Exactly. And, and that's the thing that, that really, you know, touched my heart is when I saw, you know, your film and, you know, it just, it just, it spoke to me and it, and it felt like, you know, like you're like a throwback to these people, 
you know, like Ray Franz, like, you know, um, Richard Rodway, all these people, you know, back in the day that just, you know, had this genuine feeling of like, you know, this is who I am and, and I want to tell you about it. And I want to tell you how it hurt me. And I want to tell you that this is important to me. And you just like nailed it with your, with your film. And I just, I hadn't felt that before. And it's been a long time for me because, you know, like I left when I was like 15 years old and, you know, and, and, you know, that was back in, you know, not, you know, 1985. So, you know, it was just like seeing your film just, just, you know, re, you know, played all the emotions that I had felt back in the day and, and how I had to explain myself to, you know, to my parents, to, you know, to the circuit officer, all these people, you know, this was, this was the most real, um, just like, I don't know what else to say. It was just, it was, it was such a real portrait of what it's like to be in you know, the religion. And it was just, it was incredible. So, that's the same. Yeah. It's, it's such a gift to like, I have my own experience with the religion and I was in a band like them. And we do have videos of our band playing with witnesses in an audience, similar to what they show, we showed in the film, but to have the film archive and like the, people with like shoulder cams and little handy cams videos and have all these albums of music to work with from like 50 different groups, little, little fledgling groups that kind of went and did something and then it faded away. You know, like people get married or have kids or move away and bands fail. Um, but to have it have been recorded when I, when I approached everyone that's in the movie, like some of the people I didn't know existed. So like, Oh, you got to get the camera guy who made that weird music video about cannibalism that we did. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, the ca- Oh, and the cannibal, the cannibal music video camera guy also wrote a book and he runs a group for ex witnesses. And I'm just like, Oh wow. There's like, there's a lot here. And him and his wife made like 30 videos. And like this group has this video on VHS in a closet and they're going to digitize it for you. And like, <laughs> I'm going to arc, put all this stuff on like archive.org or whatever. And, and it was like, Oh wow. There's this like huge, like terabyte of content that I can work with. It was amazing. Yeah. And I feel like then it bridges the gap from like last century, which is what we're kind of talking about, like the style and vibe of like our youthful era um, right. with all the low quality, everything that we had access to at the time, the best technology available to the average adult. <laughs> and, um, and then this century with like, you know, 4k interviews and this big of a video on the screen to like, you know, (laughs) but it it was just so interesting to work with that level. And some of the music got so good. Like you said, like I was also blown away. Like some, I fell in love with day trip and there's a couple other bands. I love that. I wasn't able to include because some of those people are still witnesses. We don't have rights to their music, but like even still like cutting out some of the best art from their collective, there was so much good art. It was just like, this is like a candy store for a film making, you know, entrepreneur. If, if I can right, use that term right, for sure. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm really glad it resonated so much. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you for sharing. And I, that means and a lot. I rap just to let you know. I, I you also rap. rap. I do rap. Wow. Have you ever recorded your rap? I have. I have. Do you have any I'll lines send, you want to do? You any, do you want to do some right now? I guess some live. <laughs> Freestyle? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. But, yeah. yeah. I love the well, recorded so, version. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I yeah. will. Is there yeah, anything else you want sure. to talk about? Um, I'm just happy that you're, you know, you're here and you are doing what you're doing because it just, um, you know, I, I kind of felt like, you know, after – the, the people, you know, kind of the pre-internet era of, of folks, um, you know, they were like, so they just, they just felt so real. And that's what I loved about, you know, Ray Fran's book. It was just so real. It just, it, mm-hmm. it spoke to me, you know what I mean? 
And then, you know, there was just like this period of time where there wasn't, you know, it was just like, you know, and this is my bias, but it's just like a whole lot of atheist bullshit, you know, which is fine. You know, I don't, I don't give a shit if you're an atheist, but it just, it just, it just didn't relate to me. And then, you know, I saw your film and it just, I'm like, holy fuck, this is, you know, this is my childhood. This is what I grew up with. These are the people that, that I love. And it just, it, it was, it was just incredible to me that, that you were able to capture the whole, you know, the whole experience of, of growing up and having that, like, you know, we, we, you know, we want you to, you know, excel, but at the same time, we don't. And, um, you know, I was, you know, I was allowed to be in band, you know, and I played, you know, clarinet and I was you know, able to be like a good clarinetist, but at the same time, I wasn't able to like really expand that in any meaningful way. So just being able to see, you know, fellow musicians and, you know, just the whole story. I mean, it's just, it's fucking amazing. I mean, like, like I said, you know, I, I want your film to be seen by everyone because it is one of the most incredible um, depictions of life in a cult and, you know, people that are talented that struggle and, you know, and they, you know, I want to know more about these people. I want to know about you. I want to know about all these folks in the film because they are so like compelling and I can, you know, I can relate to them on such a, uh, uh, a deep level and I know like you know how hard it is to like function as a human being um, you know there's like so many there's so much stuff going on and I don't know you know like you don't you know I don't know about the it's just there's a lot of stuff and I just want to know more about these people and I want to meet them and I want to see more about them and I want to see a sequel and I want to I just want to know more about these incredible people and I just am so happy that you did this for for me and so many other people so I just I want to say thank you for that amazing thank you so news on those topics I have the raw interviews for all the people in the movie and those are those are being edited right now unfortunately they're taking longer and I feel like I need to prioritize the podcast. And that's probably not true. Like the interviews are, people are going to want more of that than they do necessarily like the artist interviews, but I love doing the artist interviews. Cause that's like the film for me is we did it in 2018. Right. So it's like, it's like this old thing and it's like now, now it's ready for everyone, but I'm like loving doing the music interviews. Right. Um, so it's like, it's hard to do it all. And I do have an editor helping me, but so those are coming the one's being edited right now. Okay, good. And, good. and also another actor. 2018? From... Are you serious? It was that long yeah. ago? Holy yeah. fucking shit. It, it took until 2020 to finish. So it was like two, 18, 19, 20. So like three years of editing. And then we started the film festival, running the film festival, marketing, and like going to every place for a year was like one year of 2021. And then I've been trying to figure out how to do distribution and been turned down and turned down and learning process and learning process and like, go do this, go do that, go do this and read this person, go try to this Avenue. And it's like this whole, the industry is crazy, especially right now. It's extra crazy. Cause like everything's being upturned and the old right. way of doing things doesn't work anymore. So you have to like do mm. self distribution. And then there's like every ad based streaming service is like displacing the entire industry. And then there's the streaming wars and it's like, a lot. <laughs> so right, we're right. slowly doing yeah, this I thing step you. by step. Um, right. And I have an amazing interview. I'm excited. To, well, you've had access to it. If you haven't seen it yet, it's the Alan Feuerbacher interview. Oh, and yes. it's only on Patreon. He okay. is in the vein of the world you're talking about. He was, he was one of the early eighties or mid eighties yes, activists. Yes. Yes. Have you heard of him? 
Yes, of course. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I okay, wrote papers awesome. on him. I went. I went to amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. I went to um, University of Chicago, and I, you know, I did a master's degree on on the witnesses. So yeah, mm. yeah, fuck yeah. He was what is that? Him. What is a master's like, degree on witnesses? What does that mean? <laughs> It just means I spent most of my time, you know, talking about the witnesses. I mean, my my focus was on New Testament. Um, okay. you know, was yeah, it a seminary but, I mean, school? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Which so you said the University of Chicago, but it, did yeah. that a seminary department? Um, well, I could have been. I could have went the seminary route, but I just, you know, I I just got the the master's degree from University of Chicago before I went to law school. Okay. But, um, but yeah, yeah, for sure. He was like number one, Harry and, um, Heather and Gary Bodding was, you know, you know, number two, uh, Timothy White with his, you know, a people for his name. I mean, like so wow. many great books. Yes. So, you so, know, you know about Alan. Yeah. Yeah. Already. For sure. Yeah. That's yeah, so interesting. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. You, I, so he approached me just out of the blue when we did the crowdfund before we made witness underground, when we were raising the money for it. And he just wrote me an email cold and he's like, can I come hang out with you? And I had like the interview studio all set up with the lights and the cameras and every microphones. And he didn't even know it was so interesting, such a funny little moment. Cause he actually left him out in the cold on accident. Cause we had like a time set, but he like couldn't find my address. And then it was like, I miss his call or something. He was like wandering in the neighborhood for a while. And then he got to my house. He's like, I've been, I was about to leave. I can't believe what's happening. It was winter, you know, it's like a poor guy. Right. And he came to my apartment and he's like, well, are we getting coffee? What's happening? And I was like, oh, I'll make you coffee. But before we talk, I want you to sign this paper. And it was like just a release consent, like a like the most basic consent form. And he's right. like, what are we doing? And I was like, oh, I have like a whole camera and studio in this like apartment I was renting for half a year all set up. And we sit down and he's like, I had no idea we were going to be doing this. And we were, we did this for like five hours or four hours. The first interview, I interviewed him again um, with his wife, um, but at, at their house, but this interview was so interesting. He's like, well, you have questions for me? And I was like, you should like, we don't really know each other. Why don't you start at the beginning? He's like the beginning. It was 1851. (laughs) <laughs> I was like 1851 it took like an hour to get to the last century. Right. <laughs> you know, I was just like, Oh my God, I'm like in for a long ride. And the guy was fascinating. There's this, like, if you watch it, it's the full cut right now is three hours. You know, I'm going to cut it down a little pieces, but he has this like amazing yeah. piece about Mastodons and how the Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses use this like false narrative about how Mastodons were, flash frozen during they were frozen and they're like in the Antarctic and you can still eat them. And that's, and the Jehovah's Witnesses use this like weird, like not true history um, right. to describe the flood for their time frame of when the flood mm-hmm. was. Right. And, and so he, when he, he like quit the witness, well, he took a break from the witnesses and went to MIT. This is part of his story. which is like, you should watch the whole interview. Of course, everyone should. And I'm so excited to put this out in the world. It's like such a fascinating little bit, but, he he studied in MIT about the Mastodons. He like made he like did everything he could to like make all of his pieces about like this research about the Mastodons being flash frozen to try to prove the witnesses right. And in the end, he read every paper ever published about flash frozen Mastodons and everything that ever happened, and how the witnesses misquoted it and it was a complete lie, and they used it to um, prop up an idea that wasn't true about the flood and the time frame of the flood. Excuse right. me. Anyway, fascinating guy. And then I got to go to his house and he invited us. Well, we asked him to do another interview. So I went there and he has this nice house in like the foothills of the Rockies in Loveland. And um, this this library in Colorado. Yeah. This is library that is like probably the world's largest collection outside of the Jehovah's Witness own collection of literature on the Jehovah's Witnesses. Really? And the most amazing thing is he has a shelf about as big as the one behind you, like ceiling to floor of the books that were the source material for almost every new, new light as Jehovah's Witnesses call their right. new ideas, but are really like just proving their old lies. Um, they call it new light. And it's like, they're borrowing ideas from these books. He was like, what is this new idea that Jehovah's Witnesses presented 
And he went and found the book of the original author for that idea because they were just plagiarizing. And he found the plagiarizing like paragraph and he did, he's like a savant. He would like figure out based on like the writing style of each person in the writing department and like who was behind him, including the plagiarism and like the twisting of it in the style and like what scriptures they were using all this like nuanced detail to figure out because everything's ghost written in the entire for 150 right. years right right, right. no right. one right. no one's attributed right and you can't quote them and you can't out them and you can't like hit them with like oh well he wrote that stuff so everything he ever wrote was wrong which is kind of what they're doing with tony morris right now right like one right. of the leaders kind of got ousted recently and it's like well anything that shows his face anything he's ever said any talk he's ever getting everything he's ever printed right. it's being erased it's erased right but anyways so this guy's like I love the source library. That that thing blew my mind. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, you have a place in Colorado. You also have a place here in Phoenix. This oh, yeah. is yeah, this is Where my are we? Uh, yeah, this is my uh, condo across from wow. Footprint Footprint Center. I have a ridiculous amount of money, so I spend I spend it Amazing. Um, <laughs> that looks yeah. incredible. Yeah. What a view. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. You made the right choice from going to lawyer instead of seminary, probably. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. But as um, I've told you before, you're always welcome. And I would love to have you. So thank you, Matthew. If you, yeah. And, and definitely want to have your film uh, here as soon as possible. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's, let's organize something. I do. Okay. It sounds like you're, we're going to wrap up here. Is that, is that what's happening? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. In October, I'm doing something new. So I want to just pitch this to you real quick, but also to everyone who will see this. We're going to okay. be doing a big crowdfund push, and that's to bring awareness to the movie. But okay. I also want to use it to bring awareness to other people's projects, YouTube channels, podcasts, authors, books, and any musicians who have their content out. They want to like help. They want to use that material to sell. They want to sell their material. And so whatever money we raise from your book, your show, your podcast, an interview on that, during October. I'm not, we're not okay. quite sure on the exact dates, but right. I'd love to highlight your new show. It sounds aw- yeah. an awesome opportunity to bring you on again and like, let's talk to everyone about your show. Maybe it could even be a good time to release it, like maybe by okay. the end of October. If, I don't know sure time, what timeline you're on, but at least we can get people like work, looking forward to it at the very least. Okay. And I want to hear awesome. more about the clarinet that led to the rapping that is your self expression. <laughs> We'd love to. It's been a treat. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You are amazing. You really are. And I just hope I want to be a part of, you know, your uh, continued success for sure. Thanks so much, Matthew. I really appreciate it. And I feel the same way about you. It's a real pleasure to chat with you today. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Take care. See you.